Hello everyone, welcome back to Making a Tier List. Today we got the Marvel Cinematic Universe, only phases 1 through 3. And those are the only phases we're doing today. The reason I say that is because, the reason why we're not doing phase 4 right now is because I haven't seen all of phase 4. All of phase four. I've seen the beginning of it, which was... What was the beginning? WandaVision, Black Widow... I've seen. All right, in terms of movies, it was Black Widow. I've seen Black Widow. I've seen Doctor Strange two. I've seen No Way Home. I've seen Eternals. I've seen. What else have I seen? Thor: Love and Thunder. Those were the movies. In terms of the shows, because I'm also going to have to add those. In term, I've seen both specials. I've seen the Gardens Holiday Special, and I've seen the um, uh, Werewolf by Night. In terms of TV shows, I've seen Loki. I've seen WandaVision. I've seen Falcon and the Winter Soldier. I've seen Hawkeye. I've seen Moon Knight. In terms of what I haven't seen, I haven't seen... Um, the new Black Panther movie. I haven't seen She-Hulk. I haven't seen Miss Marvel. I haven't seen all of um, Marvel's What If. I haven't seen all of that. So we're going to put that on hold until I see. And I haven't seen the new Black Panther. We're going to put all that on hold until after I watch the whole thing. And then I'm going to rank all, all of Phase 4. Eventually. So with that said... This phase is one to three. These are the phases I'm most nor I can tell you about. All right. So we got our categories: amazing, epic, good, all right, and boring. All caps, because there are some pretty boring films within these first three phases. I'm pretty sure every phase has like a boring moment. I'm pretty sure. So, with that said, we're going to start with Iron Man, which is amazing. If you thought I was going to say anything different for Iron Man, you are out of your mind. It's one of my favorite movies of all time. This movie is phenomenal. And it's a great start to the MCU. It had the very controversial casting of RDJ, Robert Downey Jr. as Iron Man. Not a lot of people thought he was going to be good. And now anyone, anytime anyone thinks Iron Man, they think RDJ. You got Jeff Bridges as the villain. You got Gwyneth Paltrow as Pepper Potts. The whole film's good. Then we got The Incredible Hulk, which is the boring film of Phase 1. The Incredible Hulk was nothing, really. The Hulk hasn't really had the best luck in terms of movies. Or in terms of adapting into live action. We went through... Lou Ferrigno, we went through the 2003 Hulk movie, we went through recently She-Hulk, and I heard that was bad, if we're counting that, and now we went through, but before all, before that one, we went through The Incredible Hulk, which was when Edward Norton played Bruce Banner. A lot of people forget that, because he would never play Banner ever again. And they redesigned the Hulk they re to look like Mark Ruffalo going forward, because they designed Hulk to look like Norton. But it's still a good movie. No, I'm not kidding. It sucks. Did he really just say that The Incredible Hulk was good? No, it was boring. It sucked. I take that back. <laughs> um, I couldn't get into this. Like, the only interesting thing was the Hulk versus Abomination. That's the only fun part about this movie. Then you get to Iron Man 2, which is alright. It's not 
the best, not the worst. It's okay. Now, Iron Man 2 has the distinction of being the film where Don Cheadle played, began playing War Machine. Because we had a different guy in the first film and they didn't want to pay him a whole lot. We would then also have um, Mickey Rourke in this one. And it was fun seeing him. If you don't know who Mickey Rourke is, have you seen a film called The Wrestler where he plays Randy the Ram? Yeah. So, Iron Man 2 goes here because, again, we get to see RDJ as Stark again. And he's brilliant in this role. This is really when I think the Marvel films went a bit of a... Weren't... They were good, but they weren't reaching levels of Iron Man 1. You get to Thor, which was also, alright, a bit better than Iron Man 2, in my opinion. It was a bit better because... Chris Hemsworth... Playing Thor is hilarious. Him trying to adapt to Earth stuff is funny. It's just, I don't think the film really knows what to do with him because they know they're going to build Loki to be the villain of Avengers. So now they're thinking, how can we still make Loki the villain and not jeopardize his character before Avengers? That's what this film tried to go around. Natalie Portman playing Jane Foster. You got Kat Dennings as Darcy. Tom, Tom Hilston as Loki. Those parts are great. And then you get the moment where Thor has to be without his powers. Yeah, that's a problem. You get to Captain America, the first Avenger, which is a good film. Good opening to this character who we haven't seen in a live action format since the 90s, which big step up. Chris Evans excelled in this role. He was brilliant. He... And coming off of playing Human Torch in the bad Fantastic Four films, that's saying something. So, the CGI in these early films are a bit questionable. They get better as they go on. Like the CGI on Chris for Chris Evans to be on a skinny kid. That's funny. You know, to see Chris Evans really play like a serious character is interesting because he's normally a very silly guy. So, yeah. First Avenger, it's good. Then we get to Avengers, which is amazing. Not better than Iron Man, but amazing. You bring all the characters together, plus two more. Three, if you... The four, if you count. Oh, Phil Coulson and... um. Widow, Hawkeye, and Fury. Five, if you can't, Maria Hill. Um, I need to stop adding characters. Lewis, this is where it all comes ahead, really. All of Phase 1 has been leading to this. It has funny moments. It has extremely serious moments. Tony catching a man playing Galaga. Uh, Steve Rogers understanding the Wizard of Oz reference. It's funny. It's a nice little movie. It's amazing in terms of action. You got Hulk slamming uh, Loki around. <laughs> you got all that, really, and more. The only down part is we saw Phil Coulson die. 
the only thing I wish we could take back. Next is Iron Man 3. P better than 2 and Thor, in my opinion. It's alright. This is the one with the fake-ass Mandarin. The actor. But, um... I mean, if you were to build someone else, because Mandarin's one of Iron Man's most popular villains. And it seems downplayed to be an actor. Kind of pissed everyone off. Um, but yeah, the rest of the film's alright. It has a lot of forgettable moments. You got the kid, Harley. I think that's the kid's name. I'm not sure. Thor the Dark World's pretty boring. Better than um The Incredible Hulk. Thor the Dark World was the film where they started taking hands away from people. Now, it was the Phase 2. Almost every film in Phase 2, I think, has someone lose a hand. That's some way. I'm not sure. Um, yeah, Iron Man... Uh, Thor the Dark World was... Kind of like a downgrade. We're somewhere else. We're, and no one really cared. As a matter of fact, a lot of people say this is the worst film in the MCU. Um, it was, or at least for the time, until Eternals came out. Um, I disagree. I think The Incredible Hulk was still pretty bad. Worse than Thor The Dark World. But Eternals is the worst. But we're not talking about that today. Um, next we got uh, The Winter Soldier, which is an epic movie. Captain America, The Winter Soldier, epic. Sebastian Stan's Sebastian Stan excels as Bucky Barnes, a soldier who got mind controlled. Yeah, the Winter Soldier. Um, yeah, this is a one of the epic movies. The first one we're putting in the epic category. The Captain America films just got better with each film. Um, so don't be surprised. Because Chris Evans gives it his all. Oh, I should also mention Scarlett Johansson as Black Widow is amazing. And Jeremy Renner as Clint Barton is amazing. Back in the... Well, we didn't see much of Clint Barton. Avengers or face it. Anyway, it's epic. Gardens of the Galaxy is one of my favorites. Gardens of the Galaxy. Chris Pratt, Dave Batista, Zoe Saldana, Bradley Cooper, Vin Diesel, Michael Rooker, Karen Gillan. You got an all star cast here. Of criminals turning into heroes. It's amazing. What's not to love about it? It's funny. It's entertaining. It's, it's action packed. Guardians of the Galaxy is just a fun film. Avengers Age of Ultron. Oh. I did not like Age of Ultron. I didn't. It was boring in my opinion. We saw more of Clint Barton than we did in the last film, but then again, it wasn't enough of him to redeem himself because <laughs> no one really cared about Hawkeye and then no one cares about him here. We also got Scarlet Witch and uh, Quicksilver in this film. The only film Quicksilver would be in, really. And then you got Elizabeth Olsen as Scarlet Witch, who she has played ever since. It's fun. Ant-Man. It's good. Ant-Man's good. I like Scott Lang. I, I like Paul Rudd. He's fun. Doesn't age, which is 
weird, but great. Cat America the Winter, the Civil War, in my opinion, is better than Avengers. And I'll tell you why, because the Civil War makes sense. You are going to side with Captain America's side over Tony Stark. But then it comes down to what actor you like better. But even then, it comes you can't even choose what actor you like better. You have to choose what the characters are standing for. And this is also the debut of Spider-Man into the MCU. It is Captain America Civil War. It is brilliant. And it has some iconic shots in this movie. The debut of Black Panther in the MCU. It's brilliant. Doctor Strange is a good movie. Doctor Strange, Benedict Cumberbatch, brilliant. Time to bring in the mystic powers. Time for some magic. And Doctor Strange was good. That's all I'm going to say. It was a bit trippy, but it was good. Gardens of the Galaxy Volume 2 is great. It was amazing. You know, I'll put it in high epic. Because these are going to be saved for the best in the franchise. You know, I'm going to move Avengers over to epic. Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2 was, again, another funny entry into the, another funny entry into the MCU, and we get a lot more out of this. Nebula turns good, you got uh, Yondu sacrificing himself for Quill, Kurt Russell. It's just an amazing film. Spider-Man Homecoming. It's good. I'll put it right here. It's good. Not my favorite. Tom Holland tries. You got Tony in there. He he tries. It's it's good. Tom Holland's not my favorite Spider-Man. Thor Ragnarok is amazing. <laughs> this is probably one of the funniest films, most entertaining films in the MCU is Thor Ragnarok. All the Thor films before it don't compare to this one. The comedy is well established and extremely funny. Everything's perfectly timed. It's fantastic. Black Panther is an epic film. I'll put it right here. Black Panther's epic. I'll give it that. It was the only solo Black Panther film with T'Challa because sadly we would later learn that that um, Chadwick Boseman would pass away in the year 2020. Fuck that year. R.I.P. Chadwick Boseman. We miss you. And he plays T'Challa well, and I, in my opinion, I don't think anyone can replicate it. Then you got Michael B. Jordan as Killmonger. The whole film's good. Infinity War, an epic film. Put it right there. Another epic film in the franchise. The film where the bad guy wins. And a lot of people hate it because of that, which the good guys can't win all the time. I understand they're superheroes, but they can't win all the time. Uh, Josh Berlin excels as Thanos. This time, all the characters from the MCU join up meet each other 
and finally try to take down the big bad and ultimately fail. We do get some casualties. Heimdall, Loki. You got Vision. You got half the universe. Oh, Gamora. Half the universe. Yeah. Ant-Man and the Wasp is good. I mean, it's all right. Ant-Man and the Wasp is all right. The reason I say it's all right is because... I wasn't into it as much as I was as I was into Ant Man. And Ant Man the Wasp is a team up movie that doesn't hit all the right spots, in my opinion. Captain Marvel. What? <laughs> yeah, it's all right in my opinion. A lot of people fucking hate it, but I don't. And I'm allowed to have that opinion. You can't stop me. Captain Marvel's all right. Learning nowadays that Brie... Back in the day, I thought Brie Larson didn't care. But knowing now that... Okay, she clearly cares about this character. So, I can respect that. Nowadays, I don't get why I was hating Brie Larson. I thought she didn't care when she probably cared the most about the character. We learn how the, well, the annoying part is finding out how Nick Fury lost his eye. Damn cat. Damn you goose. Avengers Endgame. The best film in the franchise. Don't at me. It's the best. It's the climax. To what what the what should have been the climax of the whole franchise. You got Tony sacrificing himself to save the day. You got all the heroes that survived the snap coming back. You got Fat Thor. Um, yeah. Far From Home is, it's good. It, it's better than um, Homecoming. Because there's actual point to it. Instead of being, it's a Peter, it's a Spider-Man movie. Look at the, look at the Spider-Man. Now it's Peter trying to cope with uh, the death of Tony. Another problem to have with these Spider-Man movies, these early ones, that the villains are more wanting to get revenge on Tony than Spider-Man. But yeah, it's a good movie. They're good. Anyway, this is my MCU tier list from phases one to three. <laughs> Do you guys agree? If not, they're my opinion, so... You can disagree, you can agree, depends on you. Anyway, like, comment, subscribe, and see you guys next time.